Yo, yo, what's up, my people from another woman's neeple? Um, so, check it out. We are the day after it snowed, um, and it's about 12.30 p.m. Just afternoon. I didn't do a video earlier, folks, because I left my phone in my friend's truck. And, uh, yeah, she wasn't answering, well, she wasn't answering her phone. I couldn't get a hold of her this morning because I couldn't call her. So, since she's kind of lazy, she fucking slept in all day. And I just got my phone back. But anyway, yeah, I told you guys, most of the snow would be gone already, dude. Hey, this is insane. <coughs> People ask me about the weekend, and I'm telling you guys, this is all going to be gone by this weekend, I promise you. I promise you. Not even a question. Not even a question. I know a lot of my walks are the same, but you guys get to see what this walk looks like when it's really pretty out. Right now it's 40 degrees. As I said, it's about 1230. Here's Moon Ridge Road. Oh yeah. Looks really pretty, doesn't it? Once again, I'm pimping it in my shorts. You guys should see me when the ground isn't wet and I'm driving my motorcycle. I'll ride that thing in my shorts when it's like 25 degrees out. I'm an idiot. But yeah, look. How's it going? Pretty good. Just doing my uh, winter recording videos. Thanks again. Who are you guys fixing that light for me? What? You don't... No, no, no. Thank you oh, for making... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was... Like, that was seriously like God saying, let there be light. In, only in my bedroom, though. <laughs> yeah, but no, I'm... Yeah, I mean, you know, glad it all worked out. Yeah, 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 thank you. Thank you. Um, I appreciate it. How's your winter going? Yeah. Finally, some snow came, huh? <laughs> well, nice to see you. You too. Take care. <coughs> so, yeah, guys. So, this is obviously the parking lot for the Best Western. This was absolutely covered in snow yesterday. Obviously. Obviously, obviously. And not that it matters, but I'm getting my, my car fixed. What happened, guys, is um, I've, I want to learn how to change all the stuff out and fix everything, like, you know, oil changes, all that stuff, even more in-depth. So, diagnosis was my body control module on my Saturn was out, my BCM. So, looked up everywhere, even fucking junkyards and stuff, but I found out the best bet for those is to get a brand new one. Um, and it was... 300 bucks so I guess I should have done more fucking research but I thought I did when I get the thing I take apart my car begin to to uh, uninstall the old one that's not working this is all shit right behind my dashboard then I plug in the new one expecting it to be like plug and play right well not not really to find out I have to take it to a GM certified fucking fucking mechanic and have that motherfucker program the thing for me program it <laughs> so do you know what the programming costs just plugs it into the computer for a couple minutes yeah 195 dollars dude so i was telling myself a couple months ago that the only way i'm gonna do that is when we actually get some real serious snow up here yeah and i'm gonna need it because i've been driving my motorcycle around so i haven't needed it but I am gonna need it now. Yep, I am gonna need it now. What's this fucking guy doing? Alright. So we're just gonna do the walk around Walgreens and back. 
<laughs> so that lady I was talking to, um, three nights before I moved into my house, I, I actually stayed at that Best Western because my house wasn't ready yet. Um, and uh, it's so funny, the fucking people who fucking make fun of me because it's a small place and shit, dude. If you're paying fucking 500 a month, dude, for a two-story fucking house, all to your own, water included, like, like uh, who's fucking laughing now, you dumbass motherfucker? <laughs> Seriously, you're the fucking moron. <coughs> it's all I need. I'm never fucking home, dude. So I'm there to fucking sleep. But, uh, yeah, so who's the fucking moron now? Yeah, I may live in a little fucking place, but the fuck else do I need, bro? And uh, I just paid six months worth of rent in one payment. Like, like uh, these are happy times in life. I grew up in Newport Beach where that's what everyone focuses on. All they care about is what you drive, what you got in your pocket, how hot the chick is you're dating. Just very superficial. And I grew up in the most superficial parts of Newport Beach. Like, you think you gotta be wealthy to, to fucking live there. Well, I fucking grew up like on this little island called Linda Isle. Not Lido, Linda, L-I-N-D-A. It's right across the bay from Harbor Island Drive. And if you go a, another outlet down, you got fucking Bobble Island. And then to the other side, you have Dover Shores. Um, but yeah, man, this shit was just fucking gnarly. Um, we had a 69 foot yacht, Rolls Royces, fucking Mercedes, Porsches. Um, living maids, dude, a living nanny. Like, but this is how I thought everyone fucking grew up, dude. I, because I had no idea. I, I was young, but keep in mind, my mom and dad came from nothing. My, my dad was sometimes put in an orphanage on the weekends and stuff, and my mom's parents didn't have a fucking thing. So, it's pretty amazing seeing fucking people from absolutely nothing one time have more than most. Um, like, dude, my parents used to fly the Concorde and shit, bro, like, um, when it was still in action. And uh, that was like 10,000 pe- 10, bucks a head, dude, for, for like the cheapest flight. That was 20 years ago. So anyway, yeah, man. So I know what it's like to have more money than God, okay? I grew up with it. But I think that has been... that was something that I allowed to hinder me as a kid because I didn't feel like I had to earn anything as a youngster. And that's truly, truly uh, seems like the mentality for most kids nowadays. Uh, But the fact is, is that they have that mentality without that financial backing. Uh, My dad was this famous doctor to the stars. He was chief psychiatrist at Lompoc Federal Penitentiary, also ran a youth detention center mom top 100 in the real estate field for over 25 years in the whole country like you can see where that wealth came from but then shit happens man um they aren't like that not even close (laughs) now like like uh, they'd be happy if i could send them some money so um which is what kids are kids are supposed to do man we're supposed to give back to our parents our family they're very 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 important people um So yeah, so the whole point of that thing was like making fun of me and like laughing at at me and trying to hurt my feelings because I live in a little tiny fucking place. Like some, some, some like dude was like, dude, and who are you to talk shit? You live in that little fucking shed. It's like, it's like, dude, like can't people have more mature fucking like uh, confrontations and shit like, um, that shit just fucking hurts people's feelings, dude. That shit's just fucking stupid. And I don't know why I let it hurt my fucking feelings because I had a choice to move into a 2,500 square foot house out here for 1,200 a month, had a two car garage, a basement. So it, it, it was like a four story house, uh, but I didn't necessarily need it. And although I've got, you, you know, some, some other businesses I work on on the side, um, I can't afford it. But people, like, as I said, I grew up in an area where, where all that mattered was what you wear, what you drive, what's in your wallet, how much money's in your wallet, who you're dating, what college 
mommy and daddy are gonna pay for. Like, like it's 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 like, dude, it's a fucking joke. It's a fucking joke, man. That lifestyle is great, but it's just the immaturity and the arrogance and just pure ego. Um, really fucking didn't didn't set right with with me, you know. Everybody's equal, dude. As I said, my parents grew up fucking poor. My dad was sometimes put in an orphanage and stuff, like, and he became a super fucking success. Um, most of my family I don't talk with, though. I, I talk to my dad on, on a regular basis, but the rest of them, long story. I have six siblings, and I'll, I'll let you guys know sometime why I can't fucking stand any of them, and it's, it's, it's pretty bad, dude. It's pretty bad. No one thinks that their family would be a part of something like that, but my oldest brother is like the biggest piece of shit who ever walked the fucking planet. If any of you ever saw him, I would hope you would try to fucking assault him. I'm, I'm just kidding. Not assault him. I'm just fucking playing. Um, like, just yell at him or something. And then do what you gotta do. But people like that don't deserve to breathe. And that's my own blood, blood guys. Like, he doesn't deserve to breathe. Anyway... So, yeah, guys, just most important thing, I think, is just accepting your situation. And if you find anything negative or anything that you could improve on your situation, then make a conscious effort to do that. Don't just sit on yourself and fucking complain and bitch and whine. Always. Just identify your, your fucking problem and then try to fix that problem and stay focused on it you know we can change anything you guys it sounds so simple and it really is the most simple thing ever but it's not easy it's, it's difficult it's hard but if 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 you keep putting your mind to it and you really 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 focus on the positive things instead of always allowing yourself to focus on the negatives then you'll be okay so this is apples let's go check out apple i think this is no this is gold mine yeah, so, um, this looks like it'd be a cool place to hang. Oh, they have a jacuzzi. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, guys, that wasn't a rant, I hope. That wasn't a rant, but what it basically was was just, uh, accept our situations, guys. You know, we were dealt a certain hand of cards. Like, hey, look, I bet you guys didn't know that I've, I've been in nine treatment centers, dude. Two sober living houses. From the point I was 13 years old, man, my whole life has been a, a, a very rough road. Um, I don't bitch about it, though, man. I fucking, I'll get upset about it, and then I'll do something about it. Like, fucking check myself into rehabs and shit. And always do whatever's in my best fucking interest when I'm ready to. But thankfully, someone above, or whomever, man, gave me chances at life um, I shouldn't have had all of these chances at life I know many people from being in and out of AA who they relapse once and they're fucking gone forever they're either dead institutions jail or just do not have the capacity to, to come back clean up their acts again and uh, so I've been very 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 blessed and I and my thing is I want to help as many people as I can um, I mean what better way to live this this life than to help other people. And by the way, Foxy Chris, what up, brother? You're the man. Um, and yes, you are. <laughs> um, I was gonna do this shout out at the beginning, but I forgot. Angel Rosales, orale amigo, como estas? Que te vaya bien, hombre. And I'd love to see you guys, so. Also, Gabriel Magania, you're the man. Um, Gabriel's come up, guys, and, and visited me. His wife actually made me about 30 tamales for Christmas and they drove them up dude like that's how wonderful you guys are like you guys are amazing people out there and that's why I think I get so hurt when I read some of these nasty ass comments which yeah man like look I need to grow up a bit too I totally do I there's no fucking doubt there but just uh just just know guys like uh yeah yeah <laughs> I love you guys very much um you guys inspire me to do a lot of cool, fun stuff up here. And 
some of the videos I used to do when I had my truck, I would drive in spots that I would never drive because I, you know, didn't have to impress anybody, but I want to impress you guys. So anyway, you guys are awesome. Take care.